We have me doing a talk. <laughs> me myself doing a talk. I'm gonna showcase you my lady feet. Actually, let me pass this around first. Uh, so so here I have the back plate. So this is the final product. Oh wait, I don't pass the case. And there's a case that comes with it, so I just pass it around. Uh, yeah. So what I have uh built here is uh let me, let me start with a story from how I how I decided to build this keyboard. Uh, so I really like I really found the keyboard. Well, you like wait. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the projector is a bit. So I don't mind. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So the I really like split keyboards. I and this is one of the ones that I would it would be nice to get. Uh, but they are also very expensive. Uh, this is the Moonlander. Uh, they they cost the uh, US three hundred sixty five, uh, which is like something I'm not willing to pay for a split keyboard. Like there are also other cheaper split keyboards, but they are like mechanical. They are, they don't have Bluetooth. So getting a Bluetooth mechanical split keyboard was what I wanted. Uh, and also it must be auto linear. Uh, that is very hard to come by. So so. I searched online and did some research. Like, there's a few, a lot of designs online. Actually, there's even like this catalog uh, when it loads. So, so over here, this guy, this one guy built a comparator, comparator for like wow. the layout. So you can like pick layouts. Let me pick some of the uh, layouts that people have. <laughs> so like then you can like compare the keyboard layouts uh, based on the home row, uh, the, the finger of your two in index fingers. Yeah, and then you can also print this out as PDF. Uh, then so this this allowed me to like compare various layouts and so one the one I settled on to build fifty eight. Uh, let me close this. So the Lady fifty eight uh, is this uh keyboard by the let me close this, uh by a Japanese guy. Uh, he uh he 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 designed it uh open source the board designs. So that's why I use I use this open source for the DD58. It even has support for OLED display, so you can have like a keyboard with the OLED display showing like uh, information about which layer you're on or how much battery is left. <laughs> yeah, and so he uh, requires. Uh, so the, all you need is the uh, PCB and then a case to cover the, to protect the PCB and then a microcontroller. Uh, the, in this case, uh, must be in a micro microphone factor. Ooh. Yeah, you mentioned the old Oh yeah, so so typical keyboards, uh, typical keyboards, uh, must be uh, are actually arranged by the rows. This one is arranged by the uh, the columns. Yeah, yeah, the columns. So that's what makes it often linear. Is that uh, you can move your fingers up and down without uh, straight. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, so you have to buy. So for the a keyboard, you need a PCB, uh, the, the the key switches. In this case, uh, yeah, the key switches. Uh, uh -huh. You didn't list them here. Cherry. Okay, cherry. Uh, then you need a microcontroller to connect to the computer. Uh, you need diodes because uh, then you can do the uh, key polling. Uh, then also need key caps, and uh, I think that's the most important things you need. Uh, yeah. So then I took the oh, it's not showing. Okay. Yeah, so I took I went to went on GLC PCB to do the to fabricate this PCB, the Lady 50 PCB. Uh yeah, and then I also then went to buy the parts uh on uh, Lazada. In the end, this is uh my little bill of materials. Uh Actually, uh, it was just for convenience. Oh, convenience, actually. So what is the microcontroller? Uh, so in the end, uh, yeah, give me a sec. So so he has a very nice build guide. Uh, you can show us you photos of how he builds it. And so the conventionally the uh Lily fifty is built like that. Uh, using, using uh, so this is the PCB and this is the, this one continuous switches and the microcontroller. Uh, he also has a pad for the case, which is also made out of PCB material, uh, FR4, yeah. And then uh, the bottom plate, so this is how it looks like sandwich. So when you build a keyboard, you need a plate, 
and you need a PCV. And, and so the plate helps stabilize the switches so that it doesn't move around too much. And then at the bottom, he also has a final plate. Uh, oh my gosh, the stuttering is bad. Uh, yeah, final base plate. So these are all PCB material. Yeah, so that's the way he designed it. I didn't want to go that route. So instead, uh, instead, uh, I'll show you what I did later. Uh, you can see that it's all plastic. Uh, the microcontroller I picked, however, was a nice nano. Uh, because it's Bluetooth and you can do, it supports Bluetooth splits. So you can have both sides uh, connected via Bluetooth to the computer and it uses a custom firmware called ZMK, which is similar to KMK. Yeah. And so does that mean that as far as the computer is concerned, it's actually two keyboards? It's actually one keyboard. Yeah. So one of them would behave like a Bluetooth master and then uh, the other one will uh, communicate with the master and you can uh, pick which one. Yeah. Uh, this one, this is probably the most expensive part of my build because it is uh it is a purely made for keyboard enthusiasts. So each 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 is forty dollars. Yeah. And let's give that a while. Okay. Yeah, so this is uh it's 40 Singapore dollars on this store. Uh so you can buy it and then uh oh wait, what is this? Oh yeah, wait, let me close this. Yeah, so this is my bill of materials. So in total, I went because I'm very efficient myself, I got managed to get each like at three dollars. Uh the total for well, switches were pretty cheap. The switches were pretty cheap, I mean like a few uh, cents per switch. And then I have the controller, the diodes. And the control of you see ANC is the most expensive part. The rest of the parts, they are uh, they they total to like ninety three dollars. So that was pretty cheap. I also got a uh, I had a three D printer, so that also gave me an advantage. Is I can just print my own case out of plastic, and it's like reasonably cheap. Uh, then the keycaps were given by a friend for the auction. Doesn't have a royalty of nine. Yeah, what? Doesn't have a royalty of nine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't have to go my time. That's right. That's right. Ah, I hate this. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so the there's also an alternative. So, if you don't want a, a nice nano, you can actually get an NRF micro. Which is a, a, a similarly use also Bluetooth uh use it is it looks like that. And yeah, this you can buy it on this store. Uh this is the firmware I use, which is called ZMK. It's used, it uses the Zephyr uh platform. Uh and I saw the code, I was like, wow, this is so good code. I, I love it. Uh and, and the way they customize it is using a sort of macro-ish style uh file that you just drop in, you can change it. And they ask you to do use GitHub actions to build custom firmware for every each one of your layouts for for your layout uh for your entire layout setup, yeah. And you can it supports like quite a few devices. And uh, if you know QMK, uh, in comparison to QMK, it supports DLE and also supports splits, which is great. Yeah. And so, yeah. And let me go here. So I bought the switches. Uh, they came from this store. The lighting landing pad. Yeah, milky yellow, uh, Gatoron milky yellows. And I, the PCBs also came here, uh, received them from GLC PCB. Uh, this is some glam photos of it. I sold it on the, uh, so over here, you see this little weird shaped piece that's a, that's a uh, switch uh, socket. So you put in your switches and they just, you don't need to solder your switches in. So you can just drop them in. It'll uh, hold it via the contacts. Uh, so, uh, and and then yeah, that's that's just how it works. And I also sold on the diodes. Uh, hey, and, then some the right. and got it cleaned. Sorry, you give me range. You can pull them up. Oh yeah, you can pull them up. Oh, okay. Yeah, hot salt. Hot salt. Yeah. So these are hot salt sockets. And then uh, yeah, then I sold on the diodes. And that's my key. That's that's, that's my key. I'm just testing it there. And I put on all the keys to test the. Test it out, test it out. Uh, so I have a 3D printer, so I can just print a case. Uh, first, the thing though, I wanted to build this from scratch because uh, there's no one, no one 3D prints uh, 
the PCB design, uh, the, 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 the case for a keyboard. Uh, people usually just use acrylic plates, uh, but instead I want a treatment, uh, and I can get a very thin form factor, which is what you can see there. It's quite thin. So I'm me test, test fitting the switch. So you don't want to just straight out print uh, an incorrect uh, design. You need to test fit, uh, especially when you have printer parameters, you need to make sure they are correct. So I test fitted on this switch, and that's how it looks on the PCB. And I was like, yay, I can go ahead and design the whole thing. So this is uh, me, this is the design. Oh, let me show you. So I designed it actually in open sketch. Uh, I was very daring, yes. Uh, let's see again. Every time I open this, I was like, why did I do this to myself? Okay. So so, so I, I really actually this is pretty fun because like I don't I can like import SVGs and then use the SVGs to extrude. And so that's what I did for most of it. So if you if you look at the code, it's on GitHub. Uh you can I, I'm not sure why it's not rendering yet. Oh, I think finished rendering. So, so one thing about OpenSCAD is always takes very long to render and very long to like even do a preview, especially when it's something How long is it? quite complex, uh, like a few a few seconds to up to sometimes a few minutes. Okay. Yeah. So this is the rendering, never mind. I'll, I'll not show it. I'll just show the final cats, uh, final STL. So yeah, this is the plate. Uh, let me enlarge it. This is the plate. So if you see there, I can't really take, it, take out the plate, but there's little knobs here. So what these do is they hold the PCB in place uh, to the case. And then uh, with that, I also cutted out a bottom plate. So this is what protects the bottom mm -hmm. of the keyboard. And this is what uh, I put the, so that all, So you can see there, uh, I have little you know, insets for uh, hex nuts. These are M2 hex nuts. Uh, and, then, and then M2 bolts will sit into this little cavity here. You can see that. And then I, so I got them, uh, yeah, I printed them on my friends. 3D printer, which I kidnapped from him. <laughs> uh, this is how it looks like. So it just sits there. Uh, I have, of course, a field print. At least you, you always have one field print in any project. Uh, and I got a new reel of uh, PTG instead of the ABS that was so hard to deal with uh, because it's it just kills your lungs. Yeah. And then this is me uh, disassembling it. So I finally got, I put the plate on and then put in all the switches. <laughs> And then uh, this, I finally, after a while, I finally received the microcontrollers. So I could then flash the firmware and then assemble the rest of it. Uh, so here is a back view of it with the, so you can see the little uh, yellow, yellow bit here. Uh, I don't want to remember. Yeah, that's how it holds it in place. And you can see my soldering. Uh, this one's reasonable. Uh, yeah, and then I learned the microcontroller set. So after after that, I actually uh, used it like that for a while, uh, and then this is how it looks like. So I connected both sides for power I'm using the sketchy cable. Don't ever build this cable because it can fry many things. Uh, yeah, and then that's I finally I decided like maybe I need to uh, I need to protect the microcontroller. I also got batteries, so you can install batteries. Some people like put the batteries under the microcontroller between the PCB and the microcontroller, but instead I put it on top and just like left it hanging there because I bought the batteries from uh similar power, I think. Yeah, and so you can actually see like subtly there's batteries under there. You can uh you can't see on there, but there's like a little shape. It's quite thin earlier. Let me show you the can. So this little case is what holds the microcontroller and the battery. And that's the USB C uh there's the USB C in, and then I have I had to like nicely make this little hole here to put the screw in, so it's held down by two screws here. Uh, the screws weren't actually designed to hold like a cover; it was just designed to hold an OLED screen protector. Yeah, and so that's why it looks like my desk. Uh, yeah, nice split. I moved the mouse to the right, and actually I don't. Yeah, and then oh yeah, then I wanted to. Bring it around. So you can't you bring it around keyboard with like just the switches exposed is quite bad. So I built a case for it. And because I have already the cat model for the solder, I just extrude it and then I get a case. Yeah. And then uh that's it. Why you can just strip it around. Um why do you have three cases? Why don't you do a 
you know, it's you can go to. Oh yeah, I, I want to do that, but I, I was like, hmm, how do I print it? Can uh, I can print it on one side, but yeah, yeah. So I, I couldn't really print it on any side because they are kind of curved. All the sides are kind of curved. Mm -hmm. So I just print it on the back and then made two yeah. cases. And one additional thing I want to do was to hold the to be able to take it apart anytime. So uh I have a Allen key for my M2 screws, and I did this test print for the holder. It fit perfectly the first time. I was like, wow, yes, hey. amazing. Okay, and then I started just figure out where to put it. And then it's actually in the final thing. So if you will see in the actual case, you can see the M2, you can see the hex, the, the Allen key holder there. Yeah, and then I think let's close this. Yeah, so it's all on GitHub. If you want to check it out, uh, my check out the 3D models for the uh, case. Uh, yeah, they can show you also the, uh, this, the, oh, this is an alternate version of the bottom uh, bottom part of the case uh, where it's angled at a different angle. Yeah, and then, and then this is the 3D model for the 3D model for the case. Uh, and there's the Allen key holder. And then, yeah, I think what else do they show? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Regarding questions, you can find me here. Uh, and please pass it around and show others. Yeah. Uh, so I have a question. So, so like when I use my keyboard, right? I press the button and then you know, letters show up on the screen. Basically. But you, you you were saying that you like the firmware very much. It's really nice firmware. So what does a nice custom keyboard firmware do compared to the normal keyboard? That... I, I think the more, more nice side was the code quality mm -hmm. for the firmware code. Uh, but like I think custom firmware generally allows you to mm -hmm. like, add layers. So in this case, I, I uh, most keyboard uh, enthusiasts would like who have small keyboards would definitely need layers. So you then have key combinations that will like, activate the various layers that allow you to do shortcuts that uh, that because you have missing keys, you can't do those shortcuts. Yeah. And also uh, if you have a full-size keyboard, sometimes it just helps to have a layer that you can do very common actions. Yeah, so that's why people install custom formats. Can you give an example of what like you you would use it in a layer? Hmm. I I think me I don't actually use much rely much on layers. Uh, but one thing I do have is uh a uh actually I don't have any good example. I mean, from your perspective, I have a layer with specific characters, so I for example the parentheses and brackets are under the two. Uh, index and middle finger, so yeah, it's very easy to open those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that. Let me start with the layer, like combination. Yeah. So just like this, uh, shift is like sort of doing a layer in in in, in a way. Oh, I think they call modifiers. Oh yeah, modifiers. That's also another word for it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but so so the thing that actually the difference between a modifier and a layer is that modifiers are at the protocol level for USB. Uh, layers are sort of like an abstraction on top of that that actually generate modifier combinations, <laughs> modifier key combinations. For example, you may not have a, a F1 key, right? But yeah. you want to, right? If you want to press the F1 key, you would press maybe a combination of C and D. I'm giving example. And then suddenly the A key is an F1 key and the Q is an F1 key and W is an F2 key. Yeah. But the Q is in the desktop, right? So why does it need to be yeah. so small? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think I use it with desktop, but I actually bring it around more often. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so for example, for me, uh, I have my F1 key. So this is, this is a Q, W, R, E, E, Y, right? This is the number row. Uh, on top of that, we have F1 key, right? So I'll use the this modifier and then and then hit uh hit one. Yeah. Then that would be right. Okay. Uh yeah, let me end that question. Okay, so uh finally for hackware, uh if you have uh if you have any announcements, please uh come up. I think uh Roland here has an announcement.
So, uh, hopefully, civil in this room know what Floss Asia is. I'm not going to tell us. I'm usually wearing a Floss Asia t shirt. Uh, we run an annual conference which we're back in person again. Uh, yeah, this year. Yeah, yeah. We're doing it at LRI in, in April. So, we are very much looking for speakers. If you are creating anything open source, if you're applying open source, I can do two keyboards. I hope you put me a couple of keyboards. Please do apply. We're particularly uh, interested in doing a hardware package if you can. Um, yes. We'd love to have hackware actually moderated if you wish to. We're, either way is fine. Uh, CFS closes on Tuesday. So uh, if you're interested, please step up and send us a draft and we'll put it in the group. Summit.hostasia.org. Yeah. Which will then redirect you to. Unfortunately, it'll redirect you. So oh, yeah, I'll redirect you. But, yeah, summit dot positive dot org. So here we are. We know it's where the venue against it. It's at the bottom. Black on music. Same same black. Two years. Well, depending on the time and the level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more announcements? Oh, I think. Oh, yes. Yes. So on on the Thursday, eleventh of February, we will have a. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have a, an SPGA day, whoever we want to play. So, from about 10 o'clock until 5, whatever I mean, the day here, uh, we'll be presenting, I'll be presenting, and some of my, all of us will be presenting some stuff about SPGA, the tools, the hardware, the big language, etc. So, for those who are interested in SPGA, very hands on. Uh, uh, I'm going to bring some cards and I mean, yeah, I'm going to show some. Uh, but it's seven hours, of course. No, 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 it's not. I think you'll have a bunch of The thing with the uh, DJ unit is the tool, the tool. That takes seven hours. This is crap. Okay, if you read further on the function, what's that? No, I don't know what this. I don't even know how it's you. Well, anyway, for some reason, the YouTube algorithm suggests that the video, what's this big fly or something like that? Have you ever heard of big flies, Charles? Yeah. So he, he does like the LED tape and all this. So I, I've got a whole bunch of things uh, mounted in my like, plastic tubing so that the light that comes out of it is Henry. quite diffused and light. Henry, Henry. Oh, oh yeah, okay, Henry. But lately, um, I just as, uh, as I was exploring the LED stuff, I think the, the YouTube algorithm showed me this other lead tape. This I'm, I'm not sure what it's called. It's, you, probably, you guys probably know. What is this multicolored lead tape okay. stuff called? I, I Okay. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, oh, okay. Hendrick. Well, anyway, well, well, yeah. right. But you can shoot, I'm sure. I think this is on. I think I turned it on. Oh my god, is it on? No, just deep. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Maybe I yeah, turned it on. But the, the thing that really pisses me off is that it's like the most 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 Oh yeah, and you can connect it straight to this ESP32, and you can go to like WLED or all the time. Can you someone search for WLED? And you can basically flash this 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 uh, ESP32 in a matter of minutes, and that's absolutely <laughs> <brilliant>. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, I mean, I've seven hours. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you can point the net. You can buy this five. You can buy this like five dollar WLED thing. I mean, uh, ESP32 thing. Flash it with WLED. Uh, if you can flash it over the Chrome browser, it's a very USB. Yeah, this is on. One turn on. Turn on go. Just, oh, nice. Nice. So the, the WLED uh, website, open source thing, it's got a huge community on Reddit. Um, it's got like a truck ton of effects. You can actually uh, add hardware like a microphone to it. And for certain effects, you can uh, like make it respond to sound. To be honest, I ordered the microphone hoping that it would arrive by today, but uh, that was like weeks ago. AliExpress, you suck. <laughs> and so there's so many like different things uh, you can, it affects the community is huge. Uh, you can uh, do so many crazy things like uh, yeah, attach a microphone, you can, uh, you can make a grid, you can uh, uh, append them and do all sorts of configuration. The only thing um, that, that kind of puzzles me, because I mentioned at the beginning of my talk that I've been experimenting with lead tape, the one that's in the diffuser, the, the stuff that makes this diffuse a little bit more pleasant on the eye um, is usually kind of rigid, and, and that sucks. I'm looking out for one that's a bit more bendable, because uh, then you can apply it in more interesting ways than that. So. Ooh, bendable, what? <laughs> <laughs> Like, like, you can get like the 12 volt that's 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 like in a nice uh, ear link, 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 it does go against my middle class roots to have such crazy flashing shit. <laughs> but um, for some reason, I, I like it. I'm not my last eight of option in, in the option that you only have one that says middle class. I have a lot of the, red, the, red, the white stuff too. But even, even the white stuff, sometimes I think the color, the tone is a bit off, you know? Yeah. It's all five thousand. I'm five thousand six hundred Kelvin kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a little bit for some bizarre reason. <laughs> you you wouldn't do that, jeez. But it is quite fun. Yeah, you can perhaps it. You can do all sorts of things. So like, I don't know. I mean, when I first moved to take a four by ten years ago, there was a lot of these like uncles who who like flashed up their bikes. <laughs> 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 I was thinking of this one. I was thinking of this one. I was thinking of, to be honest, I was going to do my son's bike and say, go. Because <laughs> I didn't want to do And of course, you're going to have a speaker going too. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, but where, where do those uncles live? Do they have this technology? Yeah. Where, where are they? All over. <laughs> all right, that's all I want to show. So, so I mean, to be honest, I picked this up off, off by watching a YouTube channel. So, if you just check out the WMED and, and you can find the stuff and get an ESP32, there's a new, there's different ESP32s that uh, I bought with the cheapest one, but you can get like the better one, the D, the D, the D model, for some reason, that has a bit more. Memory and it's actually faster. Uh, like you saw, there's some YouTube videos that, that when you have a microphone plugged in here, the ESP32 does make it a, a, a difference because it's much faster and responsive. And like, and here's a question to you, Ambrose. Couldn't you just use one of those things as your keyboard controller? And oh, you can, you can, yeah. Because Bluetooth is, is made by the devil. Yeah, yeah. I, I think even the firmware supports it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it's 300. Yeah. And I, it's, it's got like this plastic tape on the, on the back, which I hate because uh, it's coming undone. And it doesn't, uh, and I've somehow lost this pool. So it's a real mess right now. That actually kind of looks better. Oh, it doesn't, than, no, right. It's not the spool. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's good to. Uh, 